Nothing says sexy more than tomato juice pouring down the bosom of the one you love. We saw Ninja 3, so you know what that means. A nigga grow a baby in his belly, rock a rhinestone vest while ripping just into Kelly. Or maybe see a burlesque show with Nick Crow and take a boat with speed to hit and cruise control. J Man, Big Paul, and the beautiful June. Gonna take you from the goob all the way to the room. Ran the games of Street Fighter, helped to blow off steam. Just a sucker punch the odd life of Timothy Green. Shot Nato to Bird Demic, how we staying alive. They call it in the badass, and he's on the line. Cranking 88 minutes, cause they cool as ice. Cause a bad Jim Varney look. Looking kind of nice. Paul and June getting literal. Jason is getting laid. June is making sure all the monkey shots getting paid. They judge a bunch of movies while they're making the gray. Here's a real question for you. How did this get made? <laughs> That's a good look, Haru. What's that smell? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Matinee Monday. I'm Tall John Shear, a.k.a. Paul Shear, and this is the YouTube video channel where we highlight old episodes of How Did This Get Made, a podcast that Jason Manzoukas, June Diane Rayfield, and I have been doing for over 13 years. We sometimes go back into the vault, pulling out old episodes that we are releasing back into our main feed, and to give you a little sampler, a little taste of our show and these episodes, I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite moments of Ninja 3. Now, Ninja 3 is an insane, insane film. We released this episode in 2020, but this movie came out in 1984, and it's about ninjas, love, and murder. It is also about back hair, a lot of back hair. Billy the Cop has so much of it that it's really distracting. It comes out of his tank top, and June gets into why gym culture really is upsetting to her. Uh, Jason feels that gyms make him want to barf. I think I was the only one that was kind of okay with gyms, but I did have a question about these ninjas. Why did they come to LA? seems like they were very happy in their world. Why would they come to LA? Were they looking for acting jobs? And you know what? That made me start to think about some of the characters in this movie and, and the what they thought was normal. That also made me think about some of the characters in this movie and what they did that they thought was normal, like the V8. Yes, a character pours V8 on another character in a sexy way. Now, I am a V8 fan, and I talked about my recipe for the perfect way to drink V8, which I used to do every day when I came home from school. It was like my own James Bond drink. I actually even made a How Did This Get Made shirt about it. It's on tpublic.com. But um, I'm going to give you the recipe for that in this episode. But right now, let's talk about how Billy, one of the main characters, witnesses his co-worker get massacred by ninjas, and then the next day just goes to an aerobics class. Like, no problem. Here, take a listen. But I will say, like, even though, is this, is the, this is interesting because this happens to us a lot. Even though I was absolutely never clear on the storyline of the movie. Yeah. In terms of who I was meant to be rooting for, what was happening actually, whose interests were I meant, was I meant to be following, protagonist, antagonist, all this stuff. Characters that I didn't know who, like all the monks in the temple, good or bad, unclear. Unclear. You know, it, it seems so to me, though, that the person I want to root for is the female lead, obviously. Yes. Who's the aerobics instructor and works for the city as an electrician. But she's possessed by a a, a spirit that is causing her 50% of the time to kill innocent people. <laughs> I mean, look, so I, I saw this as to be on board for her. I mean, look, I found this to be very similar to the relationship that Bill Murray has with Sigourney Weaver in Ghostbusters. You know, she's a musician. She's playing in this thing. Zool comes in, it destroys the city. But like they got like, I mean, because also uh, Billy, the cop, he's got that kind of Bill Murray energy. He's fun. He's really oh got God, so Billy much. For, he, I, he's that this movie rewards a stalker. <laughs> this movie yeah. she, he stalks her if he gets her number from the file and calls her he finds out that where she's going to go and shows up at her at her work workplace he you know he is a stalker until she's finally like all right 
he fake arrests her. He goes, you're yeah. coming with me. And then he like just to keep her around and then it works. But I mean, I obviously I mean, would... this was just like dating in the mid 80s. Yeah, I guess. So. <laughs> then he finds a katana. He finds a like a samurai sword in her closet, her holding it in her closet. He just himself the day before killed a ninja and, <laughs> and doesn't put they are. I, I mean, I will say the police are not very good at, at, at keeping track uh, at making connections. But I mean, even how... when he takes her to the exorcist and sees <laughs> I could talk for an hour about this scene, too. Even when he sees that she is possessed by a ninja, he tells her <laughs> it's nothing. He just, you know, hypnotized you, blah, blah, blah. She then go no out. That's when she goes out and kills everybody at the funeral. That blood is on Billy's hands. Well, so here's what's crazy about Billy, too. If your timeline is correct, I think it is. He's just seen, I mean, how many of his coworkers, potentially his partners, yes. massacred in front of him by ninjas. Yes. And I believe it's either that day or the very next day he's showing up at an aerobics class of hers. Being fun and flirty, like no remorse yeah. whatsoever. When she is giving her, okay, he shoots, he shoots with an M16, the ninja guy, right? During yes. the day on the golf course. Okay. Then when, and, and, and she then, uh, 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 she then sees the ninja when she's at the top of the telephone pole, goes down, gets the sword, transfers the spirit, blah, blah, blah. She's then in the police department giving her statement. And the, then Billy comes up and is hitting on her. He just witnessed 15 of his brothers go down. And he is just like flippantly flirting. He is a sociopath. Yeah, there's something very wrong with Billy. Well, there's also something very wrong with his back hair. Okay, oh. he, I had to look it up, and he's not a Baldwin. He had, but he's so hairy like a much, Baldwin. He had so much hair. He, was... No one who has that much hair should be wearing that kind of a cut of an undershirt. It was one of those, you know, um, like I don't even know how you describe him in a in an appropriate term. But it looked just like kinda... he was wearing a sweater, but he was in a white tank top. Yes, tank top. Yeah, that is like it is so hairy. It's so rough. It was so tough. rough. As a hairy man, was... I say that was tough. It was. It was. It was distracting. Is what it I'll was say. Really in a, distracting. In a way, though, that I was like, and I mean this because I I generally want to know this. Is it distracting now because we don't see hairy men anymore? Because even now in movies, men who have hair take it all off when they do shirtless mm. scenes. Great question. I mean, Jessica St. Clair and I talked about this. Like uh, from a, uh, our point of view, we either want to see like all the hair or none of the hair. OK. But okay. It's, so, so it's the, so actually the most upsetting is sort of somewhere in between. But I think we did see all of the hair in this yes. movie and it was actually way too much. This was all yeah. so, the hair. You know, this <laughs> was this, this was, was all the hair in the world. Like but this was it, so I did not look up all this the hair. It was all he got. I think they put extra hair on him. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. When we look at a Baldwin and we saw this with uh, that Meg Ryan movie, he it's matted. It looks almost like a bear pelt. Here, uh, it was a little bit more spread out, and I think it, the unwieldy nature of the hair made it seem dirtier. Listen, it, it and I'm a hairy unkempt. guy. Yeah, I'm not, listen, I'm not trying to come in here judging like I'm some sort of hairless listen, who wonder. amongst? Who amongst? I mean, listen, and I have all the hair. Okay. But, I got so, all the but, hair. But has it is, just become societally we are conditioned the same way? I don't think so, Jason. That's that why I'm going to push back. if we saw a movie from the 70s, a full bush seems anachronistic now that it would now. You know what no, I mean? No, I think, by the way, I think full bushes are making a comeback. But thank I God. Also, but especially thank in God. quarantine. Especially but, in quarantine. Oh, quarantine but, bush is very real. And it's not talking about it's not talking about getting George W. Bush to stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing I want to say about his hair. Someone else could have had all that hair and also worn it in a different way. There was yes. something about he the is color lame. of his skin. Yeah, mm -hmm. his skin was pasty. And then to see that hair spread out the way it was, it was not right. And I could it, not take my eyes off of it. He didn't need to be in that tank. The tank. I think the, the tank, tank is was doing. Tough. I think if he didn't have the tank on, we would have accepted the hair better. Here's it was what I'll that say. it was kind of hidden and coming coming out of the tank. It was. I it think, was think you own. I think you can own that hair. 
Well, it's yes. the same way. Like sometimes if you have to do if you have to do a sex scene and they give you they give you these weird like pasties to cover up your nipples. Sure. And it's almost more obscene to have yep. those on. I, yes. I felt the same way about his tank top. It's like let's let her let's let her live. You it, know, I let's... feel like the moment before they said action, he was saying to the director, "Are you sure I have to wear this action?" And he was like, "Uh, <laughs> you know." I feel like he I know, was my uncomfortable. Heart, my heart I, broke. That is. <laughs> Just a little bit of Ninja 3. Uh, if you like the show, if you like my recipe, get the shirt. That's right. <laughs> we have a V8 shirt. Uh, anyway, every week I am here giving you a little recap of some classic How Did This Get Made episodes. Tune in here, like, subscribe, do all the things that you do. I don't need to tell you how to work social media. You get it. You're smart. You're already here. See you next week. Bye for now.